Good evening, everyone. I ask the rest of council to join me at the table, please. I want to acknowledge that we are on the traditional territory of the Coast Salish people, including our near neighbors, the Shiano First Nation and the Sauk First Nation. Welcome to the final finance meeting of 2022. Uh, please be sure to have your cell phones turned off during the meeting. First on the agenda is uh, agenda with additions. Anyone have addition, additions to this? No? Council, um, may I have someone uh, approve the agenda as written? Moved by Councillor Shukin and uh, seconded by Mayor Little. <laughs> Need these flashing lights. Um, uh, all in favor? Opposed? Carried, thank you. Okay, um, next on the agenda is public participation. Is there anyone in the community that would like to speak this evening at the finance portion of the meeting? Seeing none, we'll move on. Number four, adoption of the minutes, or, yeah, of the minutes of uh, the Finance and Environment Committee meeting of September 26, 2022. Moved by Councillor Gray. Seconded by Mayor Little. Um, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And uh, 4B, um, adoption of the Finance Committee, November 14th, 2022. Moved by Councillor F. Move adoption. Thank you. Second, Second by Councillor Shukin. All in favor? Opposed? Carried? Thank you. So, number five. Okay. On to reports. On page seven. Uh, Councillor's update. Um, so we've started with um, well, we haven't started with uh, budget talks, but our CFO, Su Lin, has uh, created a schedule that we'll talk a little bit about um, in this uh, agenda um, that is um, uh, going to be starting in January. Um, 
Uh, one of the regional groups that I sit on and one of the boards is the West Shore Parks and Recreation uh, Society. Um, the new board had its director's inaugural meeting. It included the election of officers and appointments. There are five owners. There's View Royal, Colwood, um, Langford, Machosen, and the Highlands. Um, we went through the three quarter, uh, or third quarter of the finance report, um, skateport, skate park project, which is now broken ground and things are moving along. Uh, there'll be lots of activity happening there in the, uh, in the uh, coming year. Um, they also had an interesting uh, slide presentation uh, during our orientation. One of the things that they're doing there is they're doing some energy renewal and they're, take, they're cap and capturing the heat from making the ice, they're taking the heat from that and rerouting it to the child care center. And uh, apparently we will be doing a tour at some point, I think in the new year of, of the whole facility, this council, if you're interested. Um, one of three uh, organizations uh, in the region, that are, or not in the region, but I think in Canada, that are actually doing that. So it's really reducing the uh, uh, greenhouse gases by about 85%. So that was uh, uh, something of interest. Uh, council, all of our council members and our mayor had attended uh, RCMP meet and greet uh, for the West Shore. And this was um, presented by uh, Superintendent Todd Preston. He gave us a PowerPoint presentation of all the services that um, they do through their detachment. He's offered us a ride along for those who are interested. So I'm looking forward to that myself. And that will be in the new year as a three hour snapshot of, of what a police officer does. Um, and we're still waiting for uh, the outcome of ne negotiations with the province to set up our policing costs. And we'll have more to report on that in the new year as well. Um, as my acting mayor role, which will end probably next week, um, so we break for the holidays and then it's someone else's turn in January, I had the opportunity to um, attend the welcoming uh, ceremony of all the sailors returning home after being on a six months uh, deployment in the um, uh, Indo-Asia um, part of the world where they were doing uh, training exercises with our allied countries and patrolling areas around North uh, Korea. Um, as many of you may have seen, there's a lot of activity going on in the village core, a lot of community activities and commerce uh, related to that. So that's uh, very exciting with craft fairs and Christmas uh, farmer's market, art shows, maker's market, um, lots of hustle and bustle, lots of busyness at the, um, the Christmas farmer's market had a, a, a draw with, uh, uh, of people that would go through the museum and uh, old barn books, which are always uh, a highlight. Um, the uh, Machosan Equestrian Society had a demonstration of uh, four riders doing a quadrille to some uh, music, and that was um, a lot of fun. We'd only been practicing for about four weeks, so that was, that was good fun. Uh, always great to have people come up ringside where it's safer to see us and have a chit chat. Um, but uh, the residents and visitors shopping closer to home and supporting our local economy and events and businesses is uh, really lovely to see. We have a, a vibrant community and, and when I'm out there seeing that, it's, it's great. Um, and the last thing on my, um, my update is uh, just a reminder that uh, we do have the Backpack Project Christmas campaign uh, going on here in, in um, Machosen. You'll have passed that as you walked into the building to tonight. Um, it's a local initiative. It's been going on, f it's in its 14th year now. Um, provides mutual aid to community members who live without homes. And they provide life-saving supplies such as tents, sleeping bags, blankets, clothing, food, water, medical supplies, that sort of thing. Um, donations to toiletry items and ready-to-eat foods as well. And uh, so if you are interested in bringing in any donations, it's the, um, those can be done uh, while the office is open Monday to Friday, 8 to 4. Um, do I have somebody accept that and move it? Is that right? The report? I don't think so. No, okay. Okay, so then on the uh, next one. So report uh, 7B, staff report. 
So this is um, this was prepared by our CFO. Um, it's a staff report, budget, and consultation schedule. Uh, the annual budget uh, process and review are used to balance the level of service expected by the community with the ability to pay through realistic taxation and user fees. Safety costs um, this year are a high priority, um, them be, those being um, the increase in policing costs and budgeting for the replacement of one of our uh, largest capital assets, which is our fire hall. Um, as stated in the Community Charter Section 166, Council is mandated to undertake a process of public consultation um, regarding the proposed financial plan before its adoption. Our CFO has proposed an ambitious schedule of six budget meetings starting in January, um, in January 29th, actually. Um, we are hoping to open that up to the public. We haven't decided on a, a time yet. Uh, some of those dates are the same evening that there will be a finance meeting. May I have a, a motion to accept this report, please? Uh, motion by uh, Mayor Little, um, second by Councillor Shukin. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. And that is all for the finance uh, agenda. May I have a motion to move, please? To adjourn, thank you. <laughs> and a seconder, please. Se seconded by Councillor Epp. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you very much, everyone. Okay, good evening everybody. Uh, this is the council meeting for December 12th, uh, 2022. Um, uh, a I'll entertain a, a motion to approve the agenda with the addition of the 2023-2027 budget process and public consultation that we just discussed uh, at the finance meeting. With that addition, I will, um, that will be for ratification. I'll take a motion to approve the agenda. Motion by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Donaldson. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, we have two presentations. Uh, the first by uh, Mr. Chris Kaur from Pivotal IRM. Welcome. CAO to bring forward a, a public presentation on the status of uh, Machosan Elementary. Um, I was first, first asked to get involved with this in to late 2018 and have been involved really in trying to remanage the building since then. Uh, I'll keep this at a fairly high level and then allow questions to go into that depending on Council's uh, needs. So in terms of background, the building was purchased in 2017 for about $1.5 million. I think the best way I can describe it is that the repair is mostly adequate. The school district had done a passable job in maintaining it, but with some deficiencies. And the, the key issue really with the school is that if you're going to lease it in the open market, it's not really perfectly suitable. Uh, the urinals in there, for example, are still for small boys and um, that's not necessarily what you need in an office building. So the, uh, however, the rest of the building, although out of very much out of date, um, is fundamentally fairly sound. Uh, it totals about 23,000 square feet. There's in addition uh, field space and open space that includes parking space and 
other components such as uh, septic tanks and field. Um, in terms of the split between the majority of the building as, as most people will know it, the old school house which is the one which most people favour um, is the, the part on the top right as you see the picture there and most people favour that. So that's about 9,800 square feet odd. Uh, that's currently occupied by Macca and I'm assuming that probably everybody in the room knows who Macca are. Um, and then there's the extension which is um, a little less uh, uh, beautiful but nevertheless functional and that's about 13,000 square feet plus or minus and so you've got really a, a total there of around 23,000 square feet. The, uh, there was an attempt to lease this after acquisition um, by uh, basically making it publicly available but nobody really expressed interest and it didn't make any progress as a, a general leasing building and the reason for that will become obvious with some of the slides to follow because you'll see the building was not in the in the very best of leasable conditions. Um, <clears throat> so there was some difficulty attracting tenants without work to improve it. Uh, the target was became uh, to create a training centre, which was a concept which was advanced by um, uh, Fire Chief Dunlop. Um, I was asked to look into it. Um, I felt it was sound based on my background looking at provincial assets. Um, and so that was pursued. Of course, there's Macca's use and then there's general community use as well. So. Um, more recently, uh, the district has been successful in, in securing a $1 million grant for some of the upgrades that are now in progress. But the dominant component of the upgrades that have been done to date have been done through rent-free periods. Now, for those who don't know what they are, I'll explain that. That's basically that when the space is leased, uh, the tenant agrees to take the space on at the rent of, that they, they see for the building in front of them and they get several months worth of rent free period uh, that they don't pay a rent on and instead of that it goes into improving the space they then add their own money on top of that and that creates in in combination it creates the capability to uh, improve the space so you'll see some pictures of this in a minute it's been quite successful but what it means is that the district didn't take on the risk and cost of advancing those funds to create the improvements. Although it did do some work, and that's largely to overcome some of the disadvantages of the building, some of the physical assets such as r roof repairs, some window repairs and so on. Uh, by and large, the improvements that you'll see were largely done by the tenants. The building is now fully committed, which is um, during COVID, is a fairly uh, significant achievement uh, whereas a number of buildings were emptying out this one has actually filled up so the uh, the tenants have renovated the space and the income is now stabilizing the the ends of those rent free periods are coming to an end um, the the rents themselves and the leases themselves do have gearing factors in them so they will uh, uh, they're now in a fairly good position or certainly the district is in a fairly good position compared to how it was after uh, absorbing the building into into sort of corporate account. Um, so for those people who don't know roughly what the building is like, it might help to see this. Um, Macca have, uh, and we had the building remeasured in September uh, because the nature and, com uh, and area of the building differs when it's in multi-tenanted use compared to single tenant. And so the latest areas are a portion there 43% uh, of the building roughly is uh, occupied by MACA, 25% um, is in the district's control and the remaining 26% uh, uh, is with instinct training which works in conjunction with the district on allowing access to some of that space and is used by Chief Dunlop for training purposes and 6% is for Mile Zero who've just had their opening I believe, soft opening I believe this weekend and are finally in uh, operating condition. So that gives you some idea as to roughly what the building is and how it works. The dominant part of the green area is the gymnasium and, and works have now commenced on that to renovate it and turn it into a fairly uh, decent community facility. I, th I believe at the end of that there will be improved washroom facilities, 
uh, communal kitchen facilities and various other bits and pieces. So it's going to be a fairly significant asset. Uh, in context, about th a third of the building only is in market rental and the rest of it is not. So this is the before and after or selected before and after shots. Uh, the top left picture is arguably one of the best of the um, uh, the teaching spaces before renovation. I noticed the linoleum floor and uh, the other components there. So usable but not especially attractive. Um, underlying that you can see the flooring conditions were um, they left a little bit to be desired. At the bottom left corner all of the classrooms had a separate washroom area and partitioned off and so these had to be removed in order to make the space usable because otherwise it detracts from the space and all of them were. Um, towards the bottom there in the centre you can see a green part of the walling with a yellow part alongside it. Um, that's at the corner of the picture which many people probably remember and liked. Unfortunately when it was put onto the building it wasn't put on in a way that um, allowed for the fabric of the building to be guaranteed to be sustained properly and there were some issues, relatively minor, they were very lucky that it wasn't larger but you can see there that the siding was splitting off and it was causing water ingress so that was removed and what you can see at the bottom right is a significant improvement in in the the nature of it. It doesn't have the paintings on it but it's certainly from a fabric perspective it's a lot better. That also gives you an indication of roughly how the building has been split so although the uh, replacement of the walling itself was the district's cost. Uh, the tenant paid the costs of putting in the windows and the doorways and satisfying on all of the uh, necessary permits etc. Um, that's going to be a, an area in summer for people to go out and sit including for tenants of the rest of the building. So in this one um, you can see top left this that was actually uh, the before condition for um, mile zero space and you can see down below it immediately what that's been turned into largely at their cost but uh, obviously with an extended rent free period from from the district to partly compensate for that so you've gone from really an asset which is passable but not a, not especially modern to something that's really very modern and when the rents are reviewed those finishes will be the district's possession they're yours and so the rent will rise at that point. It was originally leased, however, at the picture top left. So you get less rent initially, but you get a higher rent when the rent review comes through. In the middle, you can see the corridor space, uh, both before and after. That's partly during renovation. Sorry if I'm blocking some people's view over here. Um, and you can see what was done in terms of taking, uh, putting in new flooring, um, different uh, paintings and, and uh, finishing in the corridor. So it's changed it from something which is a little redolent to something which is uh, considerably more attractive. The top right bunch of three photographs, you can see the before picture, uh, just after the linoleum was removed, but basically you can see what the, what the room looked like. And the two pictures underneath that or what it looks like today. Uh, the bottom picture is in its use as classroom and the middle picture is in the district's use of the space which was as a COVID injection site. And so the district is able to use the instinct training space um, about uh, I believe 18 percent of the time it works out at is uh, the district's use in addition to the other space which is exclusively the district's use which is which is the gymnasium. And so in summary, the, the initial building challenges are now uh, largely uh, overcome. They're, it's not completed yet and it will be ongoing for some time still. But there's a, a particular point has been reached at this time and that is that the costs of operating and maintaining the building are exceeded by the income being received from the tenants. And so from a taxpayer's perspective, the, uh, the building should now not be a drain on, on the, the district's budgets. Uh, the new leases that have been put in place are largely to 2025. They start from August going through to December. Uh, Macca's is a little different from the other leases, but they're basically uh, the same. And so that break-even 
um, means that uh, you're financially in a different position. So in terms of is the $1.5 million investment uh, worthwhile or not, it's really for, for council to decide. Um, the advantages that you get with that or what you've essentially pre-purchased is that you have reduced training costs for um, the fire department. Instead of sending staff away, they're trained on site and also you have income and improved training because you're doing that in conjunction with other organisations. So there's a significant um, benefit that's not shown in any of the rents, it's quite separate. You do have a revitalised facility and you'll be able to take advantage of that when the lease is full due. Um, the, in terms of the space that you control either through MACA as a community use or through the, the gym or other space, I've equated that out and if that was to be leased on a market basis it would be roughly the same as $188,000 a year. Essentially you prepaid that by, by buying the space for $1.5 and so that's roughly the same as about a 10-year uh, simple payback. So if you were to repay your, your investment, then in 10 years' time, that's, that's the equivalent, but you'd have to pay a market rent. So essentially what you've done is, is um, you've gained an advantage, and that really is a, from a financial perspective, but you've gained additional advantages because you've got the parking, the fields, the open space, and you've preserved the, uh, the village core by controlling this. Um, in terms of the assessed value, it might help you to understand BC Assessment Authority's got a, an assessed value on it in 2.79 million. I don't know that they're necessarily right, and I think that's worthy of appeal at the next go-round, but nevertheless, that's what the statement is, 2.79 million. So essentially, you can start to see that you have got a, an improved asset. It started to turn the corner. Those works will continue. Uh, particularly with the grant renovation works, which I believe are due to complete somewhere February, March time, and some other remedial works. You will need to carry on, obviously, with uh, updating the management plan and budget and general long-term maintenance of the building, but otherwise it's turned a corner and is now paying for itself. I hope that helps, and pass it back to you. Okay. Does any of Council have any questions uh, you'd like to ask at this point? No? Oh, sorry? Uh, Councillor Shukin, go ahead. Thanks very much, Chris, for the presentation. And, and again, just compliments and kudos to uh, Councillor App and Fire Chief Dunlop for all the work they've done to get tenants in the, the building and get it to where it is now. Mm -hmm. um, could you clarify the status of the parking lots and the fields in terms of the leases and the mm -hmm. school site and all that? So uh, the first thing is the district does control them. Um, the, in terms of the, uh, the allocation of spaces, uh, MACA has 15 of the parking spaces. Instinct has one, although it's the larger uh, portion. And um, Mile Zero has two, but one of those is, is available for others to use because it's essentially reserved as a delivery bay. So there's, there's one each only for each of those tenants, 15. So that's 18 total spaces dedicated, and the rest are run as scramble parking. And the reason to use scramble parking is it's the most efficient way of managing a building of this nature where you've got differential um, parking arriving and going rather than having a dedicated space which nobody can access. So um, I think if, if I would make a suggestion it would be to move more towards scramble parking including for the MACA space um, rather than have those spaces sterilized and nobody in them in a particular day. Um, that would be a, a great advantage. In terms of the, the long term, the two parts of the field are um, the upper area which is reserved really for the septic field and you can't really touch that. Um, people have tried to put parking on septic fields and it never works well. Um, you'll have a crisis. Um, the lower field is more usable. It's, it's um, more accessible from the general parking area. You have also alongside that um, the uh, extended tarmac, uh, tarmac adam area, some of which is fenced off. 
I think if that was remanaged, then you would have a significant increase in potential parking there. And I think it's also feasible to use some of that area to provide a better access point to the gymnasium. And it'll be more obvious to the community where to go to get into the gymnasium. So there's a couple of areas there where with some remanagement, I, I don't know what the cost would be, but it, it will alleviate what I anticipate will be an increasing pressure on parking. I don't believe at the moment, any from what I've heard, anybody's parking on the street. But as the, bus as the businesses there do get busier, uh, you'll find increasingly that that needs to be managed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Thanks for the presentation, Chris. I wonder if you could just clarify the lease terms. It's five years to start, and then uh, at the discretion of the uh, tenants, they could take another five years? Yes, the, uh, the, the tenants are on fairly strict. This is, these are what's called a standard institutional lease, and essentially these are fairly standard globally types of leases from an investment perspective. So from a landlord's perspective, and that's you, um, the rent is received net, so if you've got any cost for the building, you get to charge them to the tenants. Um, those standard institutional leases, a common way of dealing with them is, in, certainly in North America, uh, less so in Europe, but in North America is a five-year initial lease and the ability for them to renew it. They can only do so um, on strict terms, though, and one of those is that they have to meet the commitments in the initial lease. If they don't, then there's a valid reason to not allow them to be extended, but it is then at their discretion. They would have to give that notice six months prior to term. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. Thank you very much. That was very helpful. You're welcome. Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. And next up we have uh, Jim McPherson from the Museum Society. Welcome, Jim. <coughs> Thank you very much for the uh, opportunity for me to make this brief presentation. Mm -hmm. As president and on behalf of the Machosa Museum Society, I take this opportunity to respectfully request a simple renewal of our current lease on current terms. This should allow for sufficient time to consider and evaluate the wisdom of the proposed change. At the same time, we also draw to your attention that time is of the essence. Our current lease terminates December 31st, and in the absence of any lease, we will, because of liability issues, uh, close our doors until a new lease is uh, finalized. Hence the urgency of acting on a renewal of the current lease. The Machosa Museum Society is responsible for the Schoolhouse Museum, the Pioneer Museum, and Old Barn Books. The society is broadly based and with a remarkable level of community support. This support is illustrated by the public reception at the opening celebration of the uh, Schoolhouse Museum and the incredibly positive reviews of the work done both inside and outside of the museum. For its part, the Pioneer Museum has received many compliments from visitors local and abroad in terms of expressing surprise at the scope and quality of the artifacts and presentation. Another example of community support for the Museum Society is Old Barn Books. The Old Barn Books is the Museum Society's primary source of revenue for ongoing enhancements to the Pioneer Museum and for routine maintenance and upkeep of both museums. All of this has been made possible by many committed and dedicated volunteers. Our 63 members reside primarily in Machosan, but a few members live in other municipalities within the CRD. Many of our visitors attend the Farmer's Market, Machosan Cafe, Broken Paddle, farms, uh, farm stands, and local businesses. I am here tonight to express our surprise at the proposed new contract terms for the Museum Society's license of occupation for the Pioneer Museum. There has been very limited discussion about the proposed renewal, and the agenda package makes a note of a single discrepancy between older and newer maps. The Museum Society agrees that there is a discrepancy, 
but that the proposed renewal stipulated the removal of three meters from the west side of the Pioneer Museum property line and reducing the land area there from our current uh, contract of eight meters to five comes as a complete surprise. And our question is, why the change? Our lease is a legal document and it forms the basis for all of our planning of which has been undertaken in good faith. As a society, we want to look at and plan for the future through our museums. We are committed to finding ways to make Machos more attractive for the people who live here. This includes planned renovations for the Pioneer Museum. For example, we're considering alternatives for the protection and display of agricultural artifacts on the west side of the museum. And although planning is in early stages, it's our intention that in due course to present the, this plan to council for its approval and work would be done by ourselves. The society's use of the west side of the Pioneer Museum focuses on the display of agricultural artifacts. Many of our artifacts represent the agricultural history of the chosen farmers. These artifacts require appropriate care in terms of how they are handled and displayed. They are part of the heritage of Machosan and should be treated with respect and honor of Machosan's early pioneers and the agricultural community. Our planning is now in jeopardy because of the change in the district's proposed renewal. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Jim. Did council have anything, uh, any questions you'd like to ask at this point? Go ahead, Councillor Gray. Just Jim, one. who are the members of the executive? Uh, Judith, Van, Judith Van Manen, uh, Bert Harrison, Bob Burgess, Ed McLean, uh, John Bars, Sheila uh, Mitchell, and Susie Bowen. Okay. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. Thank you, Thank very, you very much. much. Okay. Okay, presentations are over. We're moving to public participation. Four minutes per person. Please <laughs> welcome Leslie. Uh, state your name and uh, your street. Hi, I'm Leslie Zinger. I'm the current president of the Machosan Equestrian Society, just newly elected a couple of weeks ago. And I live down on Woody Beach Road. Um, I am concerned about the municipal barn license occupation. Uh, occupation or changing the lease. I did some research quickly because I just, just got back from Vegas two days ago so I <laughs> read the minutes here and I am concerned because the, I was president, previous president in late 1998-96 when we had some conflicts um, with the old barn about where or what the distance should be between that one wall where all the agricultural equipment is. At that time um, as president, we decided it was not safe, and Larry Trombley and I decided that the five meters with a picket fence is where the actual property line should have been. So they did put up a picket fence. Um, I think primary concern is safety, and when you have horses and equipment and other things going on, we have to keep that up front in all what we do down there. And I think the Chosen Equestrian Society has done a great job with safety concerns. Um, my concern with, if it's, sh um, when I looked at all these things, the Chosen Equestrian Society did sign a lease on August um, 2021, up for 2026, and it indicates it's a five meters. I did some research from 2006, 2008. It has always been the five meter distance. Um, and I understand about the, <laughs> the, the wagon, whatever. It used to be displayed on the other side where the market is. I personally think that would be a more logical place because that's where all the pedestrians are um, currently walking around. When there are horse events, having pedestrians walking around between horse trailers and horses is just a situation that could end up in a disaster, especially with children. So um, I am questioning why one lease would overrule another lease. Like mm -hmm. we have, as a society, have our lease till 2026. Mm -hmm. It does say, and it was approved by council and the municipal per sign-off person. So I was just curious. Okay. Thank you. 
Thank you, Leslie. Anybody else wish to speak? Hi, uh, Jill Armstrong, Lysandra Road. Uh, I noticed in the museum's 2020-2022 uh, lease agreement, the drawing shows eight meters beside the museum instead of five. This must have been a clerical mistake, as I'm sure our club would have been consulted and notified of any changes. Plus, our lease has not changed. This driveway and parking area are absolutely vital to our club. Most public parking areas for horse trailers or RVs allow the driver to pull in straight and back in to the parking spot in a straight angle or straight way. We have to back up at a 40 at a right angle, watching out for other trucks, trailers, horses, and the fence, not to mention people. I have a truck, but only a two horse trailer and I have just enough room when the front of my truck is straightening out, I am inches from that uh, picket fence. Um, I'm thankful that all the activities for the public are on the far side of the museum and the grandstands. It's absolutely vital we don't encourage the public into an active driveway parking lot. It's just too dangerous, especially with a rig trying to maneuver and back up into a tight space. It's also important the public is discouraged from entering the horse trailer parking area where horses are tied and to trailers. This is an issue of safety for the public, our members, and accessibility for trailer parking. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Jill. Anybody else? Hello, Gary Smurfett on Gilbert Drive. Uh, I'm not concerned about offsets here and there in those agreements, but what I am concerned about is that none of them make any mention as who pays for the utilities that these facilities use, and there's mentions of repairs, but it doesn't, there's no definition between what's a repair and what's maintenance. And then the agreements make reference to maintenance, to a maintenance schedule, but the maintenance schedules aren't attached to the agreements. Okay? And I think really those agreements need to be looked at a bit more carefully, especially if we're looking at them for five years, and you can see there's already concerns about offsets and things like that. So. I would suggest that maybe Council take its time on this. I realize there's uh, concerns from the agencies, but uh, I think more attention has to be paid to the details in them. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, good evening, folks. Chris Moore, 4545. William Head Road, um, current president of APRM. Um, I want to thank you for the opportunity to speak on behalf of the executive and the membership of APRM, although I will clearly state that it has not been uh, consolidated as yet, but that's the sense. Um, I'm here to sp tonight to speak to uh, an important looming issue from a chosen, and that is the ultimate fate of what we refer to as our buffer lands that lies between us and the soon to be business park and the high density residential development on Langford's portion of the center mountain land swap. Um, I suggest that the fate of this 112 parcel is of significant consequence, not only um, to adjacent Machosan residents, but also to our entire community. There is also, uh, I've certainly observed in others, a growing vision within this community that this partial should be put to the, well, the industry term is highest and best use, but it doesn't apply but in accordance with obvious climate change. Um, of course, we could always do what we has, have historically done under different times, and that's to turn the whole thing into parkland, with no doubt an extensive trail system running through it. As a point of interest, we already have over eight kilometers of Machosan trails, and that's excluding the galloping goose. Um, 
our question is who exactly, if something like that should happen, would it serve? Would it not be a better goal to place it under conservation protection, that is, as a complete hands-off holding for carbon sequestering and a wildlife corridor in perpetuity? As it happens, I think some of you might be aware of this, and it could not be more timely. A recently announced funding opportunity under Environment and Climate Change Canada, which was reported in the October issue of the Globe and Mail, has become available. Now this, I understand, is very similar to the Grants and Lou, whereby a local government that dedicates suitable lands under a conservation co covenant is entitled to ongoing compensation. I, um, I fully appreciate the magnitude and number of issues currently facing all the viewers our council, but here is an opportunity to shine, and not only as mayor and council, but as a caring, visionary, and sensitive community. My, our request is therefore that you take a lead role with the support of staff to explore this opportunity in detail. Don't let this one go by. Thank you. Thank you. I'll, I will speak to this uh, just because there's so much interest in this. Uh, so uh, we are moving forward. Um, as you know, we're a new council. We've got new councillors at the table. Councillor uh, Shukin, and led by Councillor Shukin and supported by Council Donaldson, they're moving forward with um, uh, discovering options for the buffer land. They're just coming um, up to date with with uh, what we have there, what were our commitments, what are the agreements, um, and they will be bringing it forward for a public consultation process. Um, more on that will be on an upcoming community planning um, meeting agenda, okay? Thank you for the, um, the suggestions, uh, Chris. Go ahead, yeah. Sorry, I, I just wanted to comment on one uh, point that Chris made, mm -hmm. and it was around carbon offsets from forest um, forest resources. And this is the second time I've heard this in in a very short time, um, and and it's it's interesting. I think you need um, a, a lot of forest to make it actually worthwhile, and with that, a lot of administration. But it, it's it's an interesting concept, and I I, I suspect we're going to be hearing more about it. Uh, whether Machosen takes the lead, I'm not sure, but it might be interesting to sign on with um, others or, or get connected with other groups who mm -hmm. might might uh, tackle the problem about how to account for this and yeah, and receive revenue. So okay. thank you, Councillor Gray. And just to say, at our last meeting, I'd um, um, suggested that the Environment Committee might be looking at this on December 19. We've moved things over to the Planning Committee but it'll still be December 19, the next report on that, I believe. Okay, and uh, the uh, MEASC, uh, the Matrosen Environmental Advisory Select Committee and uh, PTASC have been tasked with uh, coming back with recommendations. Uh, that was in the last council, they, they uh, submitted those, and so all of that information will be gathered um, uh, for us moving forward. And uh, we won't be uh, deciding on any one particular option until the public is fully engaged and has an opportunity to weigh in. You have our word on that. Okay. Seeing. Oh. Patty Whitehouse, 5311 Rocky Point Road. And um, I left my. Um, notes in the washroom when I have my coughing fit and thank you Tina for rescuing me so I'm going to have to do my best but from memory. Um, in recent council meetings there have been several questions with respect to council procedure that arose. Some examples are the whether or not it would be appropriate for council to sign a declaration that originated with a, a non-governmental organization. Um, how does it? How do appointments to community committees that are not council committees? How sh 
council committees, how should they be handled, and whether councillors um, could come to the mayor's open house given the very strict rules regarding, regarding quorum. Now, I don't expect council members to be experts or have an encyclopedia knowledge of council procedure. It's complex, there's an awful lot of it, it's not intuitive. But you have somebody at the council table with you whose job it is to advise you on matters of this nature. Um, our uh, interim CAO, if she doesn't know the answer, will know where to find it. So I'd like to respectfully suggest that that be your first uh, strategy when a, a question of council procedure that you don't know the answer to arises. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Hi, Ellen Dewar, 4809 Eels Road. Um, I've been a member of MES since about 2006, um, past secretary for several years and president one year. Um, I attended a meeting with several members of Machosan Equestrian and the Museum Society in late August. Just if you could hold, hold. Yep. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Um, at that time, uh, we discussed the additional three meters of leased area on the west side of the uh, museum space. And my first thought was, how could this three meter space appear on both our, ex our existing lease with the district as well as on the museum's lease? Um, upon viewing the museum's lease from 2017 to 2019, their lease only covered five meters to the existing picket fence to the west side of their building. Therefore, I assumed that the current lease must have been an error because it went from five meters to eight meters. Um, so over all these years, uh, MES has assumed that that space was our space for parking, and now all of a sudden it seems to have changed. Um, I understand that the museum, um, you know, I understand their conundrum and they want additional space. Um, we had suggested to them that perhaps they could move their stuff on the covered area side where there's more, um, you know, people and action and everything. Because on our side, you know, we, it's really important that we keep horses and trailers and all that stuff separate. And also, um, trailer parking is very tricky on that side because really we, we just barely have the minimum of space that we, we need to park trailers safely. And it's very tricky because you have to angle park and some of our rigs are bigger and sometimes they have a camper on and it's hard to see and it's quite challenging. Um, they did make a proposal to us about realigning the, the parking there. Um, I mean, we could certainly do a demonstration and show people just what we're faced with there. But um, it would, it, you know, I, I don't know how to be fair about this, but as far as I know, our lease has always covered that space so I don't know where this suddenly came from and I'm very concerned about it because I think it would be really detrimental to our club and uh, and all you know any events that we have there okay. Okay? okay thank you I do have a letter from Bev Bacon as well and um, I don't know if I can read that on her behalf yes okay um, this is from Bev I'm sure that the Pioneer Museum has a valid reason for wanting to enlarge their space Unfortunately, encroaching on the horse trailer parking area would be unsafe and unwise. I speak as a long-term member of MES over 20 years and a past president. I remember when enlarging the Pioneer Museum space in our direction was discussed previously. The discussion was amicable, but the decision was firm, as it should be this time. There is no spare room in the horse trailer parking lot that we could give up. We cannot, we cannot agree to making it more difficult and hazardous for backing up and maneuvering big rigs, especially when excited horses and riders, some of them children, are in the mix. Let's remember that also that in Machosan's emergency plan, the riding ring is the destination and holding area for evacuated horses. If we had more space, it would be desirable for us to build pens for that purpose. Um, we have previously discussed the need for pa parents, spectators and riders waiting to compete to have a covered area to stand in when riding lessons and events are taking place in the ring. We didn't find space for such a shelter that doesn't have the potential to be an obstruction. Safety is of paramount importance. The importance of keeping the laneway and turning room clear 
cannot be overestimated. I hope that the Pioneer Museum Society can achieve its goals in another way. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Thank you. Hi there, Kelly Tordick, my chosen community member. I'd just like to concur with Leslie, Bev, and Ellen regarding the horse trailer parking. And my suggestion would to be look at Saanich Fairground and where they put their displays and where they have their horse parking. And it's far, far, far away for safety reasons. And the same with Luxton. If you're to look at Luxton, fairgrounds you would see that all of the exhibits are inside and far away from horses it's very dangerous parking big rigs and i just like to concur to really take a look at this and your address or just your street Mitchosen. Mitchosen road yeah thank you thank you anybody else Uh, Jennifer Burgess, 3837 Duke Road. Um, I may have a small bias since uh, I'm not on the board, but I am actively working for the museum at the moment. And uh, I'm standing up here to, uh, I think, bring up the sentence of something called good neighbors. Um, I have watched uh, some amazing things happen in the Museum Society in the last two years. I'm sure you have too. And you have a fabulous new uh, schoolhouse developed. So I have a feeling that your museum board has high capabilities and high integrity. And um, over the last few years, uh, there have been several developments that have been of big assistance, I think, to the equestrian group. Um, for instance, the Museum Society, if you didn't know, maintains the power and pays for the power of anything that the equestrian society uses because they're connected to the main uh, museum power grid. Um, plus, at one point in time, um, there was a quite a decision made about uh, a fence that um, went towards the road and it was divided to allow uh, easier access for horses right, to go to get onto the trails beside uh, Happy Valley Road. So I think there's lots of room here to sit down and really think about this. Um, there are possibly other municipal um, property lands that trailers could be parked on after they're emptied. That's mm -hmm. one, one question. Um, how you empty them, I, I'm, I have actually uh, had an Arabian horse for two years but in different country. So I, I can't really say <coughs> how it would be managed here in, in this parking area, but um, I just think there is room here for um, a bit of consideration on both sides to come up with a really good answer that, uh, that suits both of these organizations. So thank you. Thank you. Um, with that, I'd like to give an opportunity to the, to the Machosan Equestrian Society. Did you want to comment on the amount of of uh, power uh, that uh, horses would use in the riding ring and at the grandstand per year. I have calculated that myself, but I'd like you to comment on that. And would you be willing to pay that uh, nominal fee uh, uh, to the uh, old or to the museum society, Leslie? Uh, Leslie Zinger, president of the Machosan Equestrian Society. I do remember years ago, <laughs> late 90s, having that discussion with the current board of the Barn Museum, and it was calculated, and I do remember it was a nominal amount of electricity that was used for the speakers um, pretty well. Um, so I'm sure it has gone up a little with the price of hydro, but I'm sure depending on what that nominal fee is, it would be a consideration. Like, I mean, I don't see you know, we could raise money, of, you know, a can, throw your money in here for the, for the power. I mean, oh, okay. you know, it's not an uh, unrealistic thing. Oh, okay. I think. I think I calculated it to be about $64 a year. Yeah, like it was nominal but then, and then I think that Tom Larry was on the board of the old barn, and mm -hmm. he, it was more of a nightmare for the <laughs> tracking of their record, so it, w it was dropped. But you would be willing to pay that. But we had made that. that offer in the 90s to pay that one. That and that offer still stands. Yeah. Okay. 
Thank you. You're welcome. Anything else? Any of the other questions want to remark about that? Councillor Gray. Well, just on that point, it didn't seem that um, the Museum Society was asking for payment. They're just rather saying that, that that's going on right now and their cooperation between the groups exists. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate that information. Thank you. Go ahead. Uh, Kathy Atherton, 4995 Le Bon Road. Um, I just want to say that um, in the past, the Equestrian Society has actually, I thought, had very good relations um, with the Museum Society, and Larry Trombley had been very uh, cooperative and instrumental with us when we had uh, put water out to the uh, grandstand, and also um, he'd assisted getting uh, electricity out there. And uh, in terms of how often does it get used and how much draw is there, I don't know. I would suggest maybe we have six events a year, and you know, basically all it is is a loudspeaker and sometimes a you know plug-in for coffee machines or something. Um, it's really not a huge draw, but um, you know, I would expect that the society would be very happy to pay whatever was required for it. I hope I'm not speaking out of turn. Um, <laughs> and. Um, Three meters might not sound like a big amount of space when you look at the size of the whole municipal grounds. Um, I'm not driving trailers anymore, but I know when I was, and mine was just a two-horse trailer, um, it still felt like you were always having to be really aware of what was going on around you and maneuvering, you know, with your trailer there, etc. And you know, it, and the space really is um, valuable because the um, the grass area in the back is also not always firm during the winter time and if you need to park there sometimes you have to pull a bit more forward onto the gravel so you're not um, you know going onto the sort of muddy or grass field because there's not a good surface there and um, the suggestion to possibly park your trailer there and then move it once you've unloaded your horse um, it might sound simple if you're not somebody who's involved with horses but if you are involved with horses, you realize that all your tack is in there and your horse feed is in there and your um, utensils to pick up and clean up after your horse are in there. And it's really not realistic um, to be trying to saddle your horse there and then have to go and tie it somewhere else when you go and move your trailer um, at that point before you can go and ride. So as, as far as I'm concerned, that is not any kind of an option to be able to uh, move your trailer once you've actually unloaded your horse from the trailer. Um, and uh, another point Mr. McPherson brought up was that there is a timeline for them for getting the, uh, the lease signed and sealed by December 31st and that they will have liability issues and have to close down the museum if it's not um, signed by that time. And I would say take a breath and take a little time to consider this if you need to, because it's not as if the farmer's market is going on. There's nothing incredibly active right now. Um, if there was time to deliberate and make parties on site until when farmer's market opens or you know even sort of March or April, I think there is time to actually look at this if it is an issue that you feel needs to be addressed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Would you like to Just speak a again? Just clarification, the Old Barn Books is open every Sunday. This does not tie it with the uh, farmer's market. Okay. Okay, anybody else wish to speak this evening? Yeah, I will. Stella French, uh, 4481 Leafield Road. I have no notes because I wasn't planning on speaking because I have no solutions. Um, as a good neighbor, uh, I understand 100% that you need the space. Uh, I also understand as the driver of a big rig, we need the space and I, I don't have a solution at all. Um, I'm not part of the uh, executive of MES. I'm a member, I'm helping to maintain the ring. Uh, I'm a coach there that uses the facility and I'm a rider there that uses the facility. Um, I can speak to if we didn't have those three meters, I wouldn't be able to bring my students there. 
Uh, I participated in uh, some of the events where we did overflow parking uh, up here against the, the back property line. Mm -hmm. uh, terrifying bringing horses through the crowd. There's good reasons you don't see horses anymore in parades and other public events. Um, there's just too great a liability. Um, it is not, uh, it's not worth the risk is the word that was going to come out. It's actually not doable. It's, it is not, uh, not a viable option. Um, I do know that uh, during the um, risk and analysis, risk management analysis that happened with the MES in the last couple of years, um, the actual parking space that is grass and gravel right now that we're, that is in discussion, um, had to be reinsured because of the driving activities that happen, as in horse and cart. Trying to be uh, sensitive to the history and all of the disciplines of the equestrians in this society. Um, I mean, maybe, maybe someday one of our horses could pull that rig for you, I don't know. But um, yeah, again, no solutions, just that, uh, that, that, that space is often 360 days of the year seems to be empty, but the couple of days a year that it does need to be full, actually every Tuesdays when we do ride there, it's pretty full of eight horse trailers plus, but um, anyway, we seem to take up a lot of space, but it's, that kicking leg can go a long way. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Carrying the load here. I wasn't going to, to speak, but <clears throat> I first of all want to say to all the equestrians out there, I can see and feel how passionate you are about uh, your riding, your horses, your space. And I'm really a new person to Machosan compared to probably most of you here. Uh, we bought property in 2004. and. Um, began living here in 2007 once we retired from Edmonton. I've been a director of the museum board for over a year now. I'm also the curator. I've become the curator of the Schoolhouse Museum, which we're very proud of and worked very, very hard in the last year with that and with the um, Native Teaching Garden which I hope you've all had a chance to look at. I just want to speak about museums because there's been so much passion about equestrian and their society. And, you know, often people don't get involved in museums until they're retired, until they're old, and we would love to change that demographic. But I got involved. These two museums, the Pioneer and the Schoolhouse Museum, and the Barn Books, they really contribute to the uniqueness of Machosan. They really do. I must say, there's no other agency in Machosan that preserves the value of the rural community and history as much as the Museum Society does with our two museums. And probably equestrian people can agree with me on that because it has to do with the space we're occupying. But we want to improve this Pioneer Museum. It needs to be improved. We need to expand. We are a public institution. We're not a private club. We belong to Machosan. And in our constitution, we preserve, exhibit, and interpret materials and artifacts pertaining to the history and the development of Machosan. I mean, we're essential to this community. And you know, I'm a volunteer. Hundreds of hours have gone into this schoolhouse museum in the last year. I, I don't get paid, either do all the other volunteers. What I'm concerned about is that volunteers like me, we count on you. On, your, on, on you, councillors. We count on the administration, we count on our district to support our endeavors at this museum to keep it alive and thriving. So I just had to share that passion that you know I'm deeply committed to keeping these alive and improving and becoming more central than they already are to this community. Thank you.
Judith Van Nennen, and your road is? I'm on Olympic View Drive. Olympic View Drive, thank right you. Right by the Lagoon Trail in beautiful Machosan. Okay, thank you. just want to say one more thing, Jill Armstrong. Um, so um, I think the, uh, I can't remember exactly the year that the riding ring was built, but um, there was a very small group of us, um, Sherry and Al and my husband, and the Lions Club, mm -hmm. basically, they started this for the children of Machosan. So I can't, if we talk about, uh, you know, being part of a rural uh, community, you can't get much more rural than artifacts and horses, right? So I'm just really hoping we can work this out. But what confuses me is if space is that important, why did the museum give up their, their covered area? Why are they not putting all their artifacts in their there are three meters on that side of the, um, I know the farmer's market uses it, but if the museum is more integral to Machosan than the market, then sh they have that space, it's covered. And I just don't understand why that's not being utilized. Uh, I just don't, sorry, I just don't understand that. So okay. that's all I wanna say. Thank you. Ed McLean, 5225 Rocky Point Road. Um, I am a member, or I'm a member of the Museum Society, and I'm on the board of directors. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to look at this whole scenario from a different perspective here. The Equestrian Society, very valuable service to the community. Museum Society, the same. What is, it, what is at issue here from my perspective, I'll take my hat off as a board member now and just be a member of the public, is that we have two parties here. Party A has a lease which is about to expire. That lease states a number of eight meters. Also an old document states five meters. The Equestrian Society has a document which shows in, on a map, felt penned five meters from the corner and another number on it at the far end of 37.25 meters. Um, any lease that I have ever been involved in regarding land has detailed dimensions of each and every boundary. Last weekend I did a whole bunch of measurements looking at the drawings and found that the Pioneer Museum is not parallel to the boundary on that side. Mm -hmm. Their only measurements that I saw were an area of parking lot 37 feet by 107 feet which is to be used jointly not under the sole discretion of the um, equestrian society. The boundary and start point of that is edge of gravel boundary and grass. Upon measuring I found that that gravel line was indeed parallel to the fence line at about 63 feet. When you measure 37 feet from that point you do hit the corner uh, fence post where the picket fence currently is. There, I'm assuming, and I know what that word means, that the equestrian society's width through there is 100 feet. So currently, if you were to measure that 37 feet and parallel to the fence, you have five meters at the back corner 
to the museum building. But because the museum isn't indeed parallel, that number at the front end happens to be about eight meters. What is up for discussion here is, is, is not who, whether the museum deserves eight meters or whether it should be five, it's we have a overlap in two legal documents. Does anybody truly know where 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 the numbers are? A felt pen on here, one of the boundaries is edge of gravel on this side. That could change. Um, we at the Museum Society, um, we want to keep old barn books open. We don't want to have to close. We do not want um, anything like that. Um, we need something in place so we can carry on. However, council, in their wisdom, decides to do that. But I do believe that there needs to be an accurate measurement of exactly where the equestrian society lease actually is. Ask yourselves how did the error in the two documents occur? That is to me what is at question here. We have two legal documents. Which one is correct? And I do not believe that council can um, on the renewal of one lease, just change, me, just changes it to suit the numbers, which may or may not be correct. Upon looking at all of the maps of all of the properties, um, the map that I saw in the Equestrian Society. Um, you can't scale it. If you count, I counted the number in, and this is in the map done by um, McElhaney. The number of fence posts that are on the uh, quest, on, on the riding ring mm -hmm. don't match what there actually is. You can't actually do it, and I'll just state that I believe we need to. Um, find out exactly where these legal documents are. All the rest of it is a moot point in, in my mind at this point in time. We got to find out what is right and what isn't in those documents. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, seeing that uh, we are, we've exceeded the 40, uh, okay. Um, if you'd like to say something, if you could uh, keep it to four minutes, uh, Bob. I, I, can, I can be a lot briefer than that. Um, I, I concur exactly with what uh, Ed McLean has said. It seems to me that what, what, what really the issue is here is what do we do right now so the museum can stay open. Mm -hmm. It seems to me that from what I'm hearing, you're going to have to get the, the whole area surveyed properly and there'll be all sorts of other stuff having to be done that can't be done between now and the end of the year. I would propose that you consider giving us a temporary occupancy for six months, a year, you pick the number, while this is going, while the discussions are going on, and also uh, a temporary license for the same period of time, during which time the, the proper surveys, all the proper discussions can take place, and uh, Hope, and presumably we can come up with a, a resolution that'll work for everybody. Okay, thank so you. So Bob Burgess, Duke Road. Oh, Bob Burgess, 38, yeah, that's right. I, I now I remember, yeah, Bob Burgess, 3837 Duke Road. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> okay that, that's it for public participation. We'll move on to the rest of the meeting. Thank you, everybody, for um, turning out to this meeting. It was a great discussion. 
Okay, adoption of the minutes. Uh, move to uh, page three of your agenda. Uh, this is the council meeting of December 5th. Could I have a motion to approve the minutes? Move. So moved by Councillor Shukin, seconded by Council Donaldson. Discussion? There's a typo on page three. In the middle down there, it's not Eric Vanderwater, but Aaron Vanderwater. Okay. Anything else? So I move the minutes be amended to reflect that. Okay. So moved. All, you have, did you want to say something? No. no. Okay. Call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to uh, the mayor's report. Okay, I've, I have uh, two things to say. Uh, number one, Councillor Gray is appointed to, has been appointed to the Mary Hill IPA Steering Committee. And number two, regarding the mayor's open house coffee tea session. Uh, that will be later this month. I think it's the 20th. Uh, what we've decided to do is uh, to avoid issues and concerns about quorum. Uh, whoever is the acti mayor at the time will be invited to that uh, coffee tea session along with the mayor and the members of the public. And since the um, acting mayor is rotated, everybody will get a chance. Okay. And then uh, let's see what else. And I'll have a, a written report uh, next time at... Uh, for the mayor's report. Regarding business arising, uh, we have 7A. This is a carryover from the finance uh, committee. So turn back to your finance committee, a report of 7B on page one of the finance uh, agenda. Uh, so we would like ratification of that. That is the 2023-2027 budget and public consultation schedule. Uh, on page nine, if you, you need a reminder, um, that was a report brought back forward by um, our interim CAO, CFO. Okay, so if I could have a, a motion uh, to ratify that. So moved. Moved by Councillor Shukin, seconded by Council Donaldson. Call the question. Oh, did you want, anybody want to say anything? No? Okay, call the question. All in favor, thank you. Great. Okay, uh, okay, what everybody's here to discuss. Let's discuss this. Uh, this is the reports uh, for action, uh, page nine of your um, council. Um, I'd like to preface this by saying we have two community groups. Both are highly valued in this community. Uh, neither of them are private clubs. They're both societies. Uh, they both have uh, unique characteristics towards our rural identity, and I appreciate both, and I think all of you will know from my previous Facebook posts and my um, advocacy at the Parks Committee that I support uh, both of those groups 100%. Um, and I acknowledge all the work that has been uh, put into the uh, Machosan Museum Society, in particular the uh, old schoolhouse. It is an, a remarkable achievement. Um, so what we have here is we have finite space. That's just a way to put it. We, we have finite space there between the fence and the barn. How I see it, and I like to deal with what is uh, written on paper, was we had two lease agreements that stated there were five meters uh, from the barn to the fence, and then uh, and there were two lease agreements that said five meters. All of a sudden, there was a lease agreement that said eight meters on one, but not on the other. At the same time, the lease agreement for the Machosan Equestrian Society was renewed with that map, not with with a consultation process or discussion that actually uh, you may only have a certain amount there, less than three meters. Um, and so what I'm de dealing with is I'm asking these both groups to collaborate and to cooperate and to be good neighbors. That doesn't mean saying this is how you should park your rigs or this is how you should use, uh, display your, your um, artifacts. I, I'd like uh, collaboration. Um, so on page nine um, of your 
council agenda. We have a little bit of background there. Everybody's had a chance to read. Um, we've got um, a discussion here um, on the municipal barn license of occupation. What has been proposed is that council approve this for a one year. This is in keeping in mind that what I'm told, and you can correct me, that any plans to change the footprint of the barn um, and putting uh, shovels into the ground would be three or four years out. Um, and so it wouldn't be within this next year. So I would appreciate it. Um, and I would actually encourage council to approve the one year lease, one, one year renewal of the lease and that would give us more time to do other assessments and hopefully come to some conclusion. But of course, uh, there's four of you at the table and I'd like to hear from, from each of you how you'd like to proceed. Councillor Gray. Well, I'd be, I'd be happy to make a motion that um, we council approve a one year renewal um, on the same terms as exist today. Uh, on the same terms that exist today. So th this is a, a one-year re renewal of the existing lease. Okay, moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Councillor Shukin. Oh, sorry, no. uh, okay, sorry. Uh, this is moved by Councillor Gray. Would anybody like to second this motion? Okay, uh, seeing none. Uh, that uh, motion does not carry. We'll move on um, to more discussion. Go ahead. Thanks, Mayor Little. Um, I, I, I am going to speak in support of option one, which is the renewal of the lease agreement for one year with a five meter setback from the building. Now, um, first of all, before I get into this, I, I do want to thank all of the, uh, the, the executive of the, um, of the, of the Museum Society, Bert and Ed, John, Judith, and Bob, and especially for Jim. Now, I had a chance, um, I've had a chance over the last few weeks to talk with Jim about this. And um, one of the things that has come up, of course, is the passion and the interest with preserving, preserving the Chosen's heritage. Mm -hmm. the, the other thing that has come up is that planning is at a very rudimentary stage. Now, with that, I believe there's no issue, there should not be an issue in doing a one-year lease agreement mm -hmm. that allows operations to continue as they are, um, and also allows for the possibility of discussion with uh, the Machosan Equestrian Society on, you know, on, a, on a goodwill basis, of course. Um, one of the things, of course, I, I did have a chance to go through the information package and, and even before getting the, uh, the agenda package. Um, the, the last lease agreement that was signed appears to be anomalous from what the measurements have been on the grounds prior. Um, and I, I'm not really clear on the basis of the eight meters and why that decision was made or why it should go back to that right now. Uh, the one thing, again, if we can have this lease agreement approved and signed, it may allow us to go back, Is as Ed was saying, look at doing additional measurements to get clarity. We probably do have to keep an eye on cost in terms of doing that, though. Mm -hmm. um, but again, renewing the lease agreement, allowing time for discussion, and also for planning on the, on the museum's part, I, 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 to me, is in order. Okay. And uh, I, 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 before I put forward the motion, I'm happy to do so. It'd be interesting to hear from other councillors as well. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Donaldson. Uh, yes, I want to thank everybody that actually uh, weighed in on this conversation uh, from both of the societies. Um, I'm, da I'm down at the, that property a couple days a week. I coach on the weekend as well. I have watched for years the amount of uh, energy and um, excitement and uh, plans that go into the museum and where it's come in, in at least the 20 years that I've been watching that, um, probably in the last 15 years since that little picket fence went up and uh, parking my rig in and out of there, as I am equestrian as well. Um, both, both of these organizations offer a lot to our community, that, that's clear. 
uh, somebody had said. And uh, there has been um, not a lot of open dialogue, which is, is kind of unfortunate, but through the years, each have helped in different ways. Um, when the electricity went in, we hired an electrician, we put out a tender for that. We got grants, we did uh, fundraising, that sort of thing, or not we, because I was still kind of new at it, but the club did. And I'm speaking on uh, the archives that I have been uh, looking at when this came up last uh, summer, early fall. And uh, the, I, don't, I couldn't find any invoices, unfortunately, for the electricity, but um, certainly the club I know can't afford it. So uh, there, is, there is the will for that. The key anywhere on any of our municipal properties, whether it's out on the trails, the beaches, the roadways, it's always about safe passage. It's always about safety. And with that is cooperation, whether it's traffic safety or pedestrian, dog walking, whatever. It's all about cooperation. So I really want to thank those who have, who've weighed in tonight. You've all brought up very, very good points. Um, uh, to Mr. Burgess' comment about uh, a timeline, I think one year is definitely uh, a good length of timeline. Keeps the doors open, and certainly we would anyways. Um, and gives us more opportunity to come to the table, as has happened previously, because uh, the club and the museum have met twice, um, and included the user groups as well. Uh, so I would, um, I'd love to uh, be able to move forward on option one tonight, and uh, so that both clubs can continue doing what, or not clubs, both societies can continue doing what they do to contribute to the, um, the ambience of, of the nature of our community. Okay. Did you want to put forth a motion? I would like to move that um, council approve the one-year renewal um, as the uh, CFO, interim CAO, has pres um, written in her report with the five meter in place for that one year. Okay. Well, I, d I didn't actually officially move it. I, I spoke to it. Yeah, okay. I spoke to her. That, yeah. That's fine. Uh, so moved by Councillor Donaldson. Would anybody like to second the motion of uh, option number one? Second it for discussion. Okay, I'll seconded by Councillor Epp for discussion. Go ahead. Um, well, I would, uh, I mean, I really appreciate all the, all the passion and all the work that goes into both of these things and, and the museum. Society has done an amazing Job in the last in the last while, especially with the schoolhouse, but with the other museum, with the barn as well, it's uh, really incredible. Um, so it's hard to sit here and you know say, well, one one or the other is right, and and uh, and I don't think that's the case. So I mean, I would uh, approve of the motion, but I would like to have so maybe it would even be number three, but I'd like to add that there be a definite um, plan moving f forward through that year that. Uh, Councillor Shukin, as uh, in the user groups or in his portfolio, um, really make a definite uh, plan to meet with the groups, to do the measurements, to check out the, the trailer parking and um, the distances required and work with the Museum Society about their plans coming up for the future. So um, I don't know if that needs to be anything like that it needs to be included in the motion or not. Thanks, uh, Councillor App. Um, I, I would happily take that on, um, and it would be great to be able to sit down. I would be happy to chair or facilitate a meeting with uh, the Museum Society and the equestrians. Um, and if we wanted to build that into the emotion, sorry, the motion, uh, I'd be happy to do that. Um, maybe we could do it as a second motion, though. We could approve. Sure. We can do that as a second motion, that's fine. Is that... Would that be okay with you, Councillor Epp? Uh, because it needs to be here. It's easier to discuss it. It's all in Yeah. I'm just trying would, to would, think about... <laughs> I'm just trying to think about the wording. Yeah. Yeah. Well, well I, again, I think the wording would go something like, Council approves the the one-year renewal of the the lease agreement um, and also um, that Councillor Shukin will uh, coordinate 
a meeting meeting or meetings mm-hmm. with the two organizations mm-hmm. to to discuss okay. um, yeah to discuss the future of this the, the setback issue right okay okay and Something and like take uh, measurements as well pardon, pardon me? and take measurements as well I don't think we can afford uh, surveys uh, they're um, very expensive I I don't know if I would commit to that I think we should start by discussion okay. so I, I mean measurements may be in order absolutely but we okay. should uh, yeah begin with discussion first okay so that's the motion seconded by councillor donaldson at just a moment uh so then did you want to weigh in on this um can you borrow the microphone please okay um well first of all i want to thank you both groups for such passion and speaking with thoroughly to the leases um that has really made my job a little easier because it, it does involve the lease that is uh, involving the Equestrian Society. So really, I have nothing more to add to the discussion. Okay. Anybody else wish to um, add comment to this? Could we just get clarity on the motion? Is it multiple meetings or one single meeting? What's proposed here? I said meeting or meetings, so it could be. I, I, I'm, I'm sh- I suspect yeah. it'll be meetings. It'll be uh, meetings, yes. It'll be meetings. Plural. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. Yep. Okay, I will say that we already have had meetings uh, with the uh, Mitchells and Equestrian Society and the Museum Society. There was one meeting that I was um, at, another meeting that I was invited to, uh, so that had taken place. So there have been, uh, actually there's been meetings, um, and so that all that information will be carried forward for, for you as well. And um, I ask that both groups work together on this. Okay, so I'm going to... Yes. I just wanted to raise a few points. So I first want to just make it clear that we're discussing two contracts and one contract we don't have before us tonight. So I'm not sure if that's a point of order, but there's just an issue here that we seem to be making comparisons and making decisions without uh, the full uh, information in front of us making me question the validity of a vote this evening on this um, um, motion. Um, So that's a little bit difficult, uh, but maybe we can pick that up in a minute. This agenda item is Council's very first public review of a contract lease we have with a volunteer group in Machosin to use our facilities in support of building community. The motion to approve a one-year renewal on old terms is not agreeable at first blush to the Museum Society. How do I see the situation? You were talking about how you see the situation, Mayor Little. How I see the situation is that the volunteer uh, Machosa Museum Society wants to renew the lease without making any changes in the current contract terms. The motion we're looking at now uh, removes almost 80 square meters of property from their lease because they didn't have that land in their lease until two years ago. But they're in full compliance uh, with their current lease. They've met all the terms of keeping things well maintained. They're out there constantly offering books for sale, best book buys probably in the whole CRD. They're taking uh, care of our heritage artifacts and improving displays all the time. They just finished a great job at the old school museum, like wow. Why impose a contract on them? They're in the midst of planning a new roof over their heritage farming artifacts. Uh, I don't think we need to get in their way at this time. Uh, There was a lot said about pedestrian access, but I didn't hear anybody from the Museum Society suggest they were going to have people out um, outside the fenced area. In fact, people may well enter inside a fenced area and be quite safe and distant from the um, horses and the trailers. I think that it would be more fair to give these us more time to negotiate a few changes to their leases that both parties uh, can agree to. That, when I mean that, the district and the museum society. It might take a little more time, but I think worth the effort. They have little power in this negotiation, so the protest becomes quite important. That's why I mentioned meetings plural. I hope it goes without saying that m- the museum society may or may not put up a pro- the proposed um, roof that they're talking about but they would prefer to continue their planning work on the idea before we barge in and reduce the field of opportunity. 
This decision is material to the um, Museum Society. I'm not sure if it's material to us. Let's again run over the facts. The Museum Society has a valid contract providing them eight meters of property down one side of the Pioneer Museum Old Barn building. To the best of my knowledge, the district and no one at this table as disputing the validity of the current contract and accepts that the Museum Society's current lease boundary line extends eight meters from the building. Adopting the motion that's on the table right now asks us to accept an assumption that the eight meter notation typewritten on the map is a typo and that today's contract is, while valid, inappropriate to review unchanged. Let's test that assumption and see what else we might find. First, everyone needs to understand or recognize that the fence line is five meters from the building and the road is eight meters from the building. Is the Museum Society boundary line properly uh, the fence or the road? We're being asked to accept that the fence line is at five meters. Let me clarify how the fence location doesn't help us to know where um, the, whether or not eight meters is a typo. Where would you put the fence line if five meters was the property border? Well, you'd probably put the fence five meters from the building. Where would you put the fence line if eight meters was the property border? Well, there's a road there, so maybe three meters away. Maybe you'd put the fence exactly where it is today, five meters from the building. It would make perfect sense. We've heard a lot about safety tonight, and naturally the fence would be offset from the road. I hope you get the point. For me, I see no discrepancy between the current contract showing an eight meter boundary line and the location of the fence at five meters. Now let's look at the map itself. It's in front of um, many people, or at least the council. I'm not sure if everybody else has it, but it's worth a look. I'm just going to grab the old one too. This is the last contract. The site map was tiny. You can see it there in the very corner if you squint carefully. That's right, that tiny little square there. You can barely make out, but with a big um, magnifying glass, you can see the five meter line in the old contract. Something happened be between the two parties, the district and the, question so and the uh, museum society. They blew up the map so you could see all the details. Now you can clearly see that it's eight meters. The reason we blow up maps generally is so that we can see exactly what's going on. And you can see the number there, it's typewritten eight meters. There's a bunch of other numbers on this very same graph. And I think, I mean, I guess what I'm saying is that when I look at the, the note we had, it says, well, there's a typo there. I don't think that's a typo. Let's look at the other numbers on the map. The map says the width of the property is 16.4 meters. This consists of two meters away from the building on the farmer's market side, plus the building width that I measured by tape. It was 6.3 meters. So that means the property extends 16.4 minus two minus 6.3, 8.1 meters um, on the side of the building with a fence. So the numbers are all internally consistent, suggesting there was no error made. The idea that there would be two or three precisely related typos on the same numbers on the map, it beggars belief. So tonight I prefer to acknowledge that the current contract was in all likelihood pursuant to an agreement between the parties, the district and the museum society to update the boundary line from five to eight meters as noted in the contract. Well, what else? Looking now just at the new map that we're being asked to sign this evening or, or approve this evening, the site map in the proposed contract does not show the bookstore, which guess what, extends 4.3 meters over the boundary line in this map um, by um, extends 4.3 meters towards the farmer's market from the old barn building, 2.3 meters outside this boundary map. So it makes it difficult to approve this exact contract that's before us tonight. This should be corrected and, and also it does mean adjusting the lease boundary line as well. So you'd have to draw on the old barn's market and adjust the, um, the boundary line to, for uh, us to make approval of the contract. The scale of the site map is stated as one to a thousand. It is not. Um, that needs to be recalculated and corrected. 
The farmer's market bandstand is missing from the map. It's important because it's half inside the Museum Society boundary and half outside by agreement between the Museum Society and the farmer's market. But it should be there so we can understand what's going on. I'm not suggesting a surveying at all exactly for, for these numbers. They're all plainly obvious for us to see tonight by just looking at the map. Also, the site map shows clearly that a portion of the roadway at the building corner is included in leased property. I am disinclined to include the roadway in a renewed contract. In my view, none of the roadway should be leased to a community group. It should be available for the public to use at all times. This is also important because the road is used, as we heard tonight, by the Equestrian Society and the members who have substantial size rigs to haul their horses and, and all the gear, uh, Kathy. It's also important because, uh, well, I guess what I'll say is this contract at the moment, is a, or this map anyway, is a dog's breakfast. Um, it's not really ready for signing as is. Just a few com more comments on the boilerplate and the body of the contract. So I think Clause 18 on insurance needs to be more specific. I think we need to spec uh, specify that insurance we need to see is third-party liability. At the moment, it just says get insurance, uh, or it says the licen all licensees shall provide proof of insurance. I would say that needs to change to say that third-party liability insurance and the district should be named as a co-insurer to at least $5 million. The co that's what you have in your car insurance you know, liability these days, many people do. The contract is missing something called an entire agreement clause, uh, which I think is necessary given all the talk tonight about maybe it's right, maybe it's not, not right. So an entire agreement clause tells you this is the contract, there's no other contract. It's also missing um, what we call an extension clause. And I think we need this in all of our leases. An extension clause is in case we find ourselves in the situation we're having tonight, which is we just like to make things easier if there's a dispute in terms of renewal. It allows you to just keep going for a little bit longer to figure things out. So those are revisions that might be good to make in the contract body. How can we move forward and get this lease signed? The contract needs to be cleaned up. Um, I hope that's clear to everyone. There are too many loose ends. We need to have good faith discussions with the uh, Museum Society about their contract and, and be sure everything is noted, for example, on the map, to our mutual satisfaction. Contract renewal makes sense for a short period of time than is, um, than is typical, and I think the one year makes sense. We can use that short renewal period of one year to fix up the contract. As has been pointed out tonight, I think the use of the property isn't a problem at the moment. There's no real world problem that we have to change the line tonight. There's nothing going on. The rigs are coming in and dropping their horses. People seem to be happy uh, being there. There's a bit of an edge to some of the comments in terms of what should be done, but I take it people are able to pull in, do their horses, and the Muse Museum Society is doing okay too at this point. So I don't see a real world problem, real world problem that we're atten uh, paying attention to. But there is this, this major issue about the overlap of lease between the Museum Society and the Equestrian Society. I made a passing reference to this at our last meeting under agenda item 8A when we were discussing the appointment of Councillor Donaldson to be the liaison for the farmer's market rather than Councillor Shukin. When I look at the lease of the Machosan Equestrian Society, I see that their property line is also disputable. By the way, I don't have it here to show you because I'd understood only the documents we had available were what we were to speak to, but having heard everything tonight, I think it's fair to say that while the boundary lines in the Equestrian Society contract map run mostly in the middle of the road, uh, there is more, uh, um, that is more than eight meters from the building, there's a handwritten notation indicating that their property boundary line is five meters from the building. Uh-oh. If we take both leases at face value, the leases overlap by roughly three meters, except that the five meter handwritten distance notation on the equestrian map in their contract is not initialed by either signator of the contract, then Mayor John Rands, and then president of the MES, the Equestrian Society, Councillor Donaldson. Why is it not initialed? Was it written on the map after the party signed? I don't expect we will ever be able to find out. And that's why people generally, if they make notations and handwriting on corrections or adjustments to contracts, they initial it so that we know it's valid. If we renew the a Museum Society lease on the same as current terms tonight at eight meter property line boundary, uh, I guess I'd like to make a subsequent motion to refer all of this to the pl uh, planning committee so that a proper review of both contracts can be done after appropriate consultation with both parties. Um, I guess I feel like we should remove the roadway from both contracts 
so that it's, the road is available at all times for the public, for emergency use vehicles, and that we'll have access to it. And I'm not saying the truck shouldn't get in there and do all their work in that, but the road is a road that needs to be there for all the purposes that everyone knows beyond the two groups. Um, so if we were to renew the contract under current terms, the uh, Museum Society would be able to continue its planning uninterrupted. I don't quite get the sense, once we change the contract, how can they make the plan for whatever they're going to do about the roof? Um, they're cut back, so it doesn't make sense to do the planning at that point. But there's still the question, should the roof come or not? And I feel like as we listened, and I apologize, I don't apologize, but I say, it seems we've drifted into whether or not the roof should go on the barn rather than what the lease should look like in terms of the safety questions that were raised earlier. I'm not aware of safety issues today other than the normal ones that exist. So I guess we get to the politics then. We're a new council. I want us to demonstrate tonight that we take our volunteer groups seriously, that we value them. I've identified a bunch of corrections and adjustments needed to the current contract. I don't think tonight's the night to cherry pick one irritation. Oh, that's the one not causing any real world problems to anybody, as I've said, and leave, it, leave the rest for another day. Do them all or do none of them. This is going to take a bit of time. That's why I was interested in ruin, renewing on current terms for a short period, but I didn't get a seconder for that motion. Let's get this planning, get this the whole thing to the planning committee to take a complete look at it so that we uh, see what we can do. I heard a number of people say, can't we work collaboratively? Can't we solve this? I'd like to support that viewpoint. I want to do community building, strengthen communications, and support our volunteers in their service to the community. We got to recognize too that the um, idea of building a roof, well, it's not going to happen unless we approve it. So if there's a new roof to be done, the council will be approving that. We might not agree with it. I am not tonight expressing any support whatsoever for a roof or not. I haven't seen the proposal. I don't even know if there's one written up. I'll keep an open mind when that comes forward. I simply don't want us to interrupt the museum's planning, um, f them from considering how best to care for their artifacts and show them off uh, by, and degrade their lease in the pro before they can get to it. We must be careful as we work with our most important asset, our community volunteers. As the district, we can change that contract whether the museum size wants it or not. We have all the power. We just do it, they'll need to suck it up. We impose our terms, I guess. My preference is to reach an agreement with them, and it sounds like it should be with them also with the Equestrian Society, um, so that we get something that many, most people can live with. I heard a number of people say, I think we can do that, so why don't we work towards that rather than imposing something. The process is important. It's the process that helps us move to reaching a deal that's acceptable to all parties. Thank you. Okay. Council Donaldson. Thank you, Councillor Gray, for your thorough um, commentary. Um, I think we need to move on with the motion and the amendment that Councillor Epp did and have the uh, community planning um, person take, take this forward and work with both uh, societies mm -hmm. as we had already discussed mm -hmm. and uh, bring all of that and everything else from the previous meetings. There have mm -hmm. been two official meetings mm -hmm. with uh, both uh, societies mm -hmm. um, and there will be more information that will come out with uh, the contracts as they are, including 20 years worth from the equestrians, mm -hmm. uh, which Councillor Shukin already has possession of. Right. Okay, and, and I hear you. I hear your comments, I hear your concerns. And one of the things that you mentioned that was so important was process and approval. And, and uh, we've asked, I've asked, where in the minutes of the Council of the Day was this approved? And the uh, Museum Society uh, wasn't able to come up with that, neither was the Machosan Equestrian Society. I also looked. So uh, policies, procedures are always based on council resolution, and that is missing. So the fact of the matter is the, the lease for the Museum Society always stated five meters. All of a sudden, it was changed to eight meters, and the same consideration wasn't, uh, uh, it, if, if you take, Three, if you give three meters here in a finite space, you've got to take away here. That was not done. That's, that's all. That, those are the basic facts. Um, and, and we can't find any documentation, which I always like to deal with. We can't find any documentation except for the revised map. And so uh, that's, that's what we're left to deal with. I think 
I think we're actually in agreement, Councillor Gray, that uh, we should move forward with, with uh, a one-year term lease so that they can get on with their business, so they can um, have the correct insurance and, the, and uh, they're addressing their liability issues. It doesn't prevent them from planning uh, for the future. Uh, I think we've stated a number of times they're valuable to our community, both as volunteers, as the museum society, um, and, and that's not what we're talking about here. What we're talking about is, is facts. And uh, the, the, what, what I'm looking at was the uh, Matosian Equestrian Society map. I was looking at the historical... Can I just finish, please? Um, what I was looking at is the Machosan Equestrian Society maps, and then I was looking at the Machosan Museum Society maps, and there was a change all of a sudden. That's just the facts, and um, and that's so what that, that's the position that we're in right now. We have finite space. One contract says this; the other one contract says that. Councillor Gray, I'm not sure that we do agree. Um, and I'm not sure that we can proceed. Now we're referencing the maps like crazy here. We don't have the maps in front of us. Could I get some advice from the um, CAO? Do we, can we make a decision without the maps in front of us? Because they form such a basis of this. this it seems like we're making the change in, to accommodate a contract which you don't have in front of us. If we were making the change for some other reason. I think the... Uh so the question before council today is based on solely on the museum society's license of occupation as um, including your package we see the discrepancy between the distance from the museum sorry the uh, building itself so that is the recommendation or documentation that have been provided for council to move forward so i recognize that along with your questions and questions from the Equestrian Society, that lease keeps coming up. However, today we're not discussing the renewal of that lease. That is the reason that that package wasn't, that information wasn't included in your package. Could I ask then, Councillor Shugan, why are we moving the line? We're moving the line because the line is, the, the eight meter setback is in conflict with the Equestrian, sorry, the Machosan Equestrian Society uh, lease agreement. And why wasn't that in the package? I can't answer that. I, um, I think you'll just have to take yeah. our, my word for yeah. it and take the interim I, CAO's word that on those maps it is stated at five meters. Yeah, go ahead. I want to go back to what uh, Councillor Donaldson was saying earlier mm -hmm. and that we have a motion on the table that this motion does allow for um, specifically mentions further dialogue mm -hmm. between the two groups. Mm -hmm. One of the things that we do have to talk about, of course, mm -hmm. is the physical reality that the equestrians have pointed out mm -hmm. that, that extending to that eight meter line is going to be prove um, challenging in terms of safety, in terms of moving trailers, so that it isn't an abstract point. It's something that we have to work out. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I believe we can work it out, mm -hmm. Um, but and and the motion on the table does allow for dialogue on that. So I think we've talked about this significantly. Mm -hmm. And I, I would I I'd ask that you call the question, Mayor Little. But I'll, I'll leave that decision to your you. Okay. Okay. So um, saying everybody has had a chance to to speak. Did you want to uh, say something again, Councillor Epp? Uh, I would just add that I think it's important to move forward. The with this uh, because of the liability issues mm -hmm. and the fact that the museum and the book barn need to remain open mm -hmm. safely. Okay. Okay, with that, I'm gonna call the question. All in favor of the motion on the table, which is, just to, just to reiterate, that council approve the one year of renewal. There will be, there will be dialogue at the community planning portfolio um, meetings, plural, uh, with the Machosan Equestrian Society and the Museum Society. In the future, there'll be consultation in collaboration with uh, direction from staff. How's that? Okay, call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, next item.
is um, this is the uh, staff report, license of occupation. This is the Machosen School Museum. So we're, we were dealing with the barn. This is for the license of occupation for the Machosen School Museum, which is on page 31. And don't get up and leave because we're going to be doing cricket le next. So, <laughs> okay. So on page 31, uh, this is for a five-year renewal. Uh, the district has granted a license of occupation to the M Matosi Museum Society for the school museum since 1998, and it is renewing the license of occupation for five years. So the options are here. What say you? I move, I move option one, that council approves the five-year renewal. Um, moved by Councillor Epps, seconded by Council Donaldson. Discussion? All in favor? Oh, okay, go ahead. I'm just wondering if it might be worth um, <laughs> Approving this motion, but but asking the contract be changed if it were meet the, there's the museum society people are here tonight to change the liability to five million dollars and name us as co-insured. Councillor F. Uh, just uh, Councillor Gray's brought up uh, you know, quite a bit about the about the contracts. The thing is, the contracts you know possibly it's not a bad idea. For staff to have a look at, at all the contracts, like it's not just the museum society, but there's the, the cricket, there's the community association, mm -hmm. and the others as far as the liability and, and the wording, rather than just focus on one. Mm -hmm. Okay, Councillor Donaldson. I think that's a good good point. Um, mm -hmm. But a note of reference: the MAS contract, we're required, and we actually put it uh, ringside. We're required to have 50, five million. Everybody sees that before they even go into the ring. That's why you have to have things like memberships and layers of insurance for this particular municipality. Mm -hmm. I believe their contract probably says that, but certainly we should bring them all up to up to code, up to par. Okay, I'm just going to ask staff um, and the museum society: uh, Can we include um, the requirement for the five million dollar liability at this point? We can definitely amend the um, license of occupation if council wishes. Okay, and um, ordinarily we don't reach out to the public during a, a meeting, but I'm going to ask uh, Jim, Mr. McPherson, would that be amenable to you? That's true, and that I should have picked up on that because that was on my parks agenda. I apologize. Um, yes, okay. We still need to renew this. Um, so we both know. How about if I work with um, Judith Van Menon um, to add that, uh, uh, what we called the annex portion uh, that was annexed into the, um, the schoolhouse? Sorry about that, I apologize, I didn't even notice. So with that, um, we'll change the, um, the map on that. And then, uh, the, the, is it okay with you if you increase your um, insurance to? I think that's fair enough, but I would like to suggest also that with uh, this uh, lease and with any other lease, that there be greater clarity in terms of the municipal responsibility for structural repairs. The municipality owns the museums. Mm -hmm. uh, that is the only statement in coming anywhere near a, uh, uh, an assumption that the, uh, that the district assumes responsibility for the physical repairs mm -hmm. and damages that might occur. Okay. Okay, good. Okay, yes? 
And I think that uh, mirrors what uh, Gary referenced early on, that we need to have that laid out in the contracts. It's not too difficult a concept. concept. We're on the capital side. You guys are on the maintenance side. I don't know if that can be addressed uh, between our staff and the Museum of Society for us. Okay. So um, is everybody clear with the motion on the floor? So this is for the five-year renewal. I'm going to uh, work with um, Judith Van Menon to amend the map. The Museum Society will be taking additional insurance uh, up to $5 million. Um, I w I'll work with staff on that. Um, and that is the motion on the table. Yeah, and we'd be co-insured. We'll be co-insured. Is that uh, acceptable, um, Sulin? Yes, it is. Okay. Okay. So with that, I'm going to call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay. Moving on to the next one. Uh, so this is uh, item number 8C. Uh, this is the staff report license of occupation for the Machosen Cricket Society on page 37. Okay, so the district grants um, a license of occupation to the Machosen Cricket Society. The current lease expires also on December 31st of this year, and staff is, is proposing a three year renewal for the license of occupation. Um, so that would be from January 1st, 2023 to December 31st, uh, 2025. We have a number of different options here. I would recommend option number one. And if you were going to ask me the que question, why three years versus five years? Um, I don't know. I don't know. And, and staff, they weren't sure why that was a, a three year uh, term of their, their uh, former leases. Okay. I would move option one. Okay, moved by Councillor Shukin, seconded by Council Epp. Uh, discussion? Yes. I noticed that clause 13 on page 41 of our agenda package talks about juveniles and um, I think this is about safety so that the licensee, that's the cricket club, will ensure that a responsible adult has authority over the group and this adult shall remain with the group while it remains on pre premises. And I just wondered, we're dipping here into uh, the question of safety for the children or juveniles. And I wondered where does the boundary, that's sort of starting off, that's sort of saying now the district has an interest in that. First one, make sure that with an adult. But going down the line, there's things like what equipment people should have, um, uh, the criminal record checks done for the adults and supervision, other questions like that. And I'm just not sure, I wonder if we know any history of why this clause is in here rather than just simply leaving it to the to the cricket group to do that. So I'm just concerned that we're drifting into something that's probably more properly the purview of the cricket society and not us. Yeah, I don't know why, actually. I suspect that uh, one could get quite hurt during a cricket match uh, with the, the balls as they're thrown. They can go in all sorts of directions. They do have pads. Perhaps I'll ask uh, Mr. Carline, since he's in the gallery. So Johnny, my question is why are we contracting you for this clause rather than leaving it up to you to, to deal with that yourselves? I don't know and I would be quite happy if you deleted that. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so we can have that deleted um, uh, mutual. Um, I'm, I'm sure it was there for a reason, but I don't know that. Oh, no? Okay. Okay, with the deletion of uh, clause 13. So, Johnny, you're here tonight. Would you go $5 million for us on the liability and co-insured? The insurance um, in, the, in the cricket process is, is actually provided by the Vancouver and District uh, of League, mm -hmm. and they have every player and every umpire register and acknowledge that that is the insurance level that they're, they're at. Uh, so, um, and I couldn't tell you by the uh, Vancouver and District cricket thing, and we just pay our... Okay. In other words, it may be more than this, in fact. It, it could be. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else would like to comment? 
With that, I'll call the question with the deletion of clause number 13. Um, all in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay, moving on in the agenda package to uh, the emergency capital expenditure request on page 45. Okay, so th this, um, this is a request that Council approve the additional capital expense request, request to replace the furnace for the old school site occupied by the Machosan, um, uh, by, by MACA. Uh, so the recommendation is that Council approve the capital funding request uh, for the two new furnaces at the old school space occupied by MACA. So this was uh, something that was sudden, something that wasn't planned for, and this is requiring an, an emergency capital expenditure request. Okay. Mayor Little, uh, thanks very much. I, I am prepared to um, uh, uh, vote in favor of the recommendation. I, I do have one question though, and I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm not making a motion as yet. Um, is, in terms of this expense, is there a policy that MACA may have followed to get a second quote for this work? And um, strangely enough, we had our uh, furnace go down a number of years, well, no, no, not even go down, go looked at. And I think we were told we have a cracked heat exchanger. We got a second quote, second uh, assessment, and the furnace was apparently fine. So, sorry, it just always stuck with me. But I, I, I guess my question is, was there a second quote that was uh, sought? So. <laughs> yes, there was a second quote. There, yeah, there's sort of common practices to get three quotes. However, we were unable to get three quotes, so we did, did have additional quote, though, not just the one sole provider. Thank you. Okay. Would anybody like to move this? I, I would move that Council approve the capital funding request for two new furnaces at the old school to re occupied by MACA. Okay. Seconded by Council Donaldson. Anybody else want to comment? Councillor Gray. Thanks, I'm gonna vote in support of this motion, but I wanted to acknowledge the comment that Kelly Dordick made at a different meeting, I think it was, suggesting that we move to heat exchangers at the, um, um, at the old school. The problem, Kelly, that occurred, I gather, was that this all happened very quickly, and the, a review to do heat exchangers would have been a much bigger job in terms of all of the duct work and all, you know, sort of a much larger question. And so um, your comment and those ideas just came after the time, I think things got going. Yeah, yeah. Quite a, quite a high space. Okay. So, any other comment? No. If not, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. Okay. And then uh, next on the list is um, item number ten. This is correspondence from Morgan Yates the Rural Economic Diversifi Diversification and Infrastructure Program. Uh, this is a correspondence on page 47 of your agenda package. So the request is for exceptional status. And there's also a second request that, uh, that the mayor have a direct engagement with uh, the uh, Honorable Mitzi Dean, uh, the MLA for our area, in, in terms of this uh, request. So, would that be? Okay, go ahead. I move that the district seek confirmation um, from the RETA program office that the rural community of Machosan, in partnership with the Shiana First Nation, uh, make application to the program as a specific exception to the guidelines. And that uh, Mayor Little engage with our MLA uh, for the same purpose. Okay, so that's outlined in the letter uh, that is on page 49 of your uh, council package. Seconded by Council F. Discussion. Yes. Um, I, I'm in support of the, uh, the motion. Mm -hmm. um, one question I ask though is uh, how about if we, we should send the letter, but a phone call. Do we know who we might phone to get more of a, an immediate response to this? 
or, uh, or at least test the waters as well. In terms of, of expediting this uh, exception status? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but I could ask staff, actually. You mean a phone call while the letter's going out tomorrow? Yeah. Sure. Okay. That's fine. Anybody else have any other comments? With not, I'll call the question. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Good. Okay. And then other business, bylaws, and question period. We have 17 minutes. Uh, does anybody have any questions that they would like to ask uh, council? Everybody's exhausted from the discussion already. Okay, seeing none, I'll take a move, move a motion to adjourn the meeting. Moved by Councillor Gray, seconded by Council F. All in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you for a good discussion.